Well, I was lucky in this regard because my parents used the word autism in the house for as long as I can remember. So since about age five and a half or so, after my speech had pretty much normalized and I had enough awareness of what was going on around me, I realized that my parents were using the word autism and were talking to me about being autistic. But they would talk about autism in the same way that anybody else might talk about somebody having brown hair or wearing glasses. However, what I find is that many, perhaps even most people, don't learn about being on the autism spectrum until they're told sometime later in life. Being self-aware of my autism empowered me a lot because I realized why things were the way they were, or I should say why things are the way they are, and that there are strategies to overcome challenges that work well for autistic people. So some, some strategies that I had for figuring out, for working with these differences, included protocols. So what I knew that I had to do would be to study interaction of others, almost like, as Temple Grandin would say, being an anthropologist on Mars. So I would study people's interactions and do my best to figure out why people did what they did, and then I could imitate that to the best of my ability. However, what we, what we all find is that what, it sometimes works, but the imitation doesn't always generalize to all situations, and that can be quite a challenge. Effective self-advocacy skills are vital for leading a fulfilling and productive life. Because being autistic, naturally, there are going to be challenges that I face and that I'm going to have to advocate